Okay, good. Well, thanks, Leslie, for having me today, and thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you today and, and share a national perspective on the anaerobic digester industry from the EPA AgStar. Um, we're really proud to partner with the University of Nebraska. Um, EPA AgStar is a voluntary collaborative program that partners with states, universities, and nonprofits uh, to promote the anaerobic digester industry across the U.S. Um, and we rely really heavily on our uh, partners to get a good grasp of what's going on on the ground across the country um, and to, to learn about what we can do to help promote the, the industry in the U.S. And um, so uh, today I want to talk with you about innovative business models for anaerobic digestion and some success stories um, of projects across the country that hopefully some of you that work more closely with uh, projects can can help emulate um, and, and learn from those successes. So some of the business models that I want to share with you today are third-party owned and operated systems, uh, taking advantage of eco-markets for co-products, and utilizing renewable natural gas for vehicle fuel from manure-based digesters. Before um, talking about the, those success stories, I want to share with you a map from the EPA AgStar website. This is all of the livestock anaerobic digester projects across the country. I um, encourage you to go to AgStar's website. This is right on our homepage. And, and take a look at projects in your state or across the country to, to learn more about them. A lot of uh, great information, um, really interesting about feedstocks and, and types of end uses for the, the biogas. So currently in the United States, there's 244 uh, livestock anaerobic digester systems, um, majority of which are on dairy farms and also swine, poultry, beef, and a combination of those. But there is a massive potential for additional livestock AD systems across the U.S. AgStar estimates that an additional 8,000 anaerobic digesters are possible on farms. Um, and if that biogas is fully realized, uh, could be a huge potential of 250 billion cubic feet per year of biogas, uh, which is enough to power 1 million American homes electricity needs for one year. And the great thing about biogas is that it's a flexible fuel, can be used both to generate electricity, but also used to, uh, as a vehicle fuel. Um, and if that biogas is fully realized um, from those additional digesters, 2 million passenger cars could be powered. So what's currently happening in the U.S.? Um, so over the first part of the 2000s, we saw a large growth in the number of anaerobic digesters. Um, but in the past several, year, several years, um, digester growth has slowed down. So why is that? Well, a lot of reasons, and I'm sure many of you on the call uh, are, on today's webinar are very familiar with some of these challenges that um, digesters are facing. Low energy prices with the growth in the natural gas industry cause, uh, cause competing prices for natural gas um, to fall, which cause all energy prices to be very low. So building digesters um, has been challenging um, economically to put energy back on the grid and compete with um, the low energy prices that are there. Low milk prices as well, too, make it really challenging for farmers to access um, loans through their financiers. Interconnection hurdles are always a challenge, very confusing um, process often for, pro for farmers and definitely project developers. Each state has their own um, interconnection process, each utility has their own process, so it can be really challenging to overcome and try to weave your, their way through the uh, interconnection. And then uh, renewable fuel standard uncertainty, both with the long-term um, uh, viability of the renewable fuel standard um, credits for biogas, but as well as the fluctuating prices in renewable energy credits make it difficult to forecast out the long-term payback for uh, accessing those financial incentives. So what can we do? What can we do to help grow the anaerobic digester industry? Well, we've got to think outside the box. Yes, Mr. Business Cat, beyond the litter box. So that brings me to um, some successful innovative business models that uh, 
help take advantage of diversified revenue streams and share risks and rewards among the farmer, project developers, and other partners. So third-party business uh, owned and operated systems, eco markets, and uh, renewable natural gas to vehicle fuel. I want to start with talking about uh, Barway Farm in Deerfield, Massachusetts. This is a brand new anaerobic digester system um, built on a small dairy farm there. About 250 cows um, are feeding this digester, but they're also bringing in a lot of off-site food waste um, to the digester, and they're exporting the electricity produced to the natural or to the uh, uh, the grid. So here's a little process map of the business model itself. Um, Vanguard Renewables ha is a third party um, organization that develops, owns, operates, and has invested in the digester itself. And they do all of the work to help take the pressure off the farmer when developing the project. So they coordinate with the food waste producers, the waste haulers, the utilities to interconnect, all the permitting. Um, and everything that goes into making the project successful. The farmer has invested a small capital into the project and provides the manure feedstock and of course the land for the digester. Um, and the food waste producers both, uh, both provide um, the food waste to the digesters, but they also receive back the renewable energy um, from that's produced from that system. And uh, at the same time, the manure solids um, are separated and used as animal bedding on the farm, and the digestate is used as fertilizer on, our, on, the, on the farmer's field, which again grows the crops to field the, feed the cows. Um, so it's a really closed loop cycle, and they've had a lot of success there um, with that third party model. Eco markets for co products. Um, one example is Magic Dirt. It's a potting soil product that's produced from uh, digested manure. So they have partnered with 19 farms across the U.S. to separate the manure solids um, and put it into a package um, that they sell across the country. They have plans to be on the shelves at nearly half of the Walmart stores in the country by the end of this year. Um, and they have done some testing on their product. And many of you on the call, I'm sure, know that uh, digested manure is gold for for our plants, plant growth. Um, and they did some testing that showed that uh, their product has more nutrients and outcompetes um, some of the other soil products that are on the, on the shelf. So one, one company that's taking advantage of the digestate to enter into a market to help diversify revenue um, for farmers. Another great product is cow pots. Um, Freund Farm in Connecticut. It's a very small farm, about 300 dairy cows are feeding their digester and they separate their manure solids to create uh, biodegradable planters. So these planters can replace unsustainably harvested peat moss or petroleum based planters um, and it's a really great product that um, takes advantage of manure solids that would have just gone onto the field to um, but creating another additional revenue stream uh, from their digester, digestate. Fair Oaks Farm in Indiana. It's a large farm that's taking advantage of renewable natural gas and powering vehicles there. So they have uh, about 12,000 cows plus uh, swine um, feeding their digester. So it's a very large system. But they're um, compressing natural gas and fueling milk trucks that are hauling their milk to uh, across uh, three different states, and they are displacing a lot of uh, diesel fuel in the process of doing that. Hilarity's Dairy in California is also taking advantage of compressed renewable natural gas to fuel their vehicles, um, and they're fueling uh, two milk trucks and six on-farm vehicles, um, uh, pickup trucks uh, around the farm. So it's a really great um, uh, farm that they have there taking advantage of renewable natural gas. And many of you, I'm sure, are aware of the opportunities that exist in California to help finance some of these projects. Um, low, California has a low carbon fuel standard credit that, um, that many people are taking advantage of, uh, and as well as the renewable identification numbers through the RFS.
system. Um, so if farmers uh, do use vehicle fuel from their biogas, they can generate fine uh, uh, economic incentives from that biogas. Um, California also has put out um, this past year, is going to put out $50 million in grants for anaerobic digesters and other advanced manure management systems to help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So there's a lot of growth that we're seeing in the renewable natural gas um, vehicle fuel from dairy manure um, across the country. Um, the great thing about renewable natural gas is producers can lock into long-term fuel prices and don't have to uh, worry about the ups and downs in fuel prices. And of course, natural gas burns much cleaner and quieter than diesel, making it more desirable for vehicle operators. So if we're going to tackle some of the biggest challenges facing um, the country as it, in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, uh, nutrient overloaded waterways, uh, nutrient deprived soils, we've really got to think big and think big about how we can help move the anaerobic digester and biogas industry forward to tackle some of those challenges. So when thinking about those, here's just some examples, aspirational examples that I think we can all work towards um, and, and think big and try to achieve. I mean, imagine if all the dairy and the meat produced in the U.S. was hauled by renewable natural gas vehicles. It's possible, as we're seeing some farms utilizing that renewable natural gas. 50% of the fertilizer market replaced by manure-based uh, products. What if all of the dairy fiber replaced unsustainable peat moss? Um, we, sh we showed earlier that 8,000 uh, farms are possible to have anaerobic digesters. A good first step would be, let's, how about 1,000? Very well possible. And the US EPA and US Department of Agriculture has a goal of reducing our food waste um, by 50% by 2030. And it would be great, and we're already seeing it, food waste going from landfills to on-farm anaerobic digester systems. So just some of the takeaways. Technology is always important, but a business model that can take advantage of diversified revenue streams um, is a really important and can help drive product, projects forward. Um, entering the eco markets, renewable natural gas markets can definitely help make systems possible and profitable. So thank you very much. Um, I encourage you to visit the AgStar program website uh, to learn more about anaerobic digester systems and about the great work that we're doing to try to help move the industry forward.